So you spent $750 on your brand new Intel 14900KS, and you're losing the AMD. Intel's had a solution to that for months. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and I'm finally going to be testing Intel APO, Intel's Application Optimizer. I know, we've heard it before, the optimization app. Razer has one. I bet probably Asus has one. Like, all these companies have these, where it basically is just, like, clearing your RAM and stuff. Who really knows? But it, they've never worked. So, when Intel releases something that is made for specific CPUs, as you were wondering, does it work? Intel APO released back at the end of 2023 alongside the the launch of the 14900K. It got a lot of backlash and a lot of hate because Intel just said, this is only a 14th gen thing. It's an architecture issue. 13th gen and 14th gen are the exact same CPUs, just in case you're interested. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. They're not gonna work on 13th gen. It's too, it can't work. They did later earlier this year actually decide to allow 13th gen. I think they announced it at CES, but it's still very limited. This is only for like, i7s, i9s, desktop. Sorry, Intel actually does support as well 12th gen, so anything with e-cores it's going to support, but it says that it might not work on 12th and 13th gen CPUs, which honestly makes no sense. Intel application optimization is definitely like one of those apps that's still very much a work in progress. It's one of those things that I think Intel honestly needs to focus on because I think it's super cool, and I think that for a lot of people who really don't know what they're doing, this can get massive performance improvements. The games are very, very limited, and I went through all my libraries. So I have Xbox Game Pass, I have like Steam, everything, and I had a total of four games out of this whole list. I had Dirt 5, which it was on Game Pass, and Microsoft sucks, so it wouldn't even load for me. I don't know why I didn't try everything. F-122, which I actually did benchmark. Um, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. That's probably the most popular game and like the only game with multiplayer really where the FPS does matter. So that's like a game I was definitely interested in. Like even when I heard about this months ago, I was like, oh, I want to try this on Siege. And then World of Tanks because everyone's heard about that from a YouTube ad. <sighs> Alongside the requirements of Intel APO being technically 14th gen or specific i9 and i7 unsupported 13th gen and 12th gen CPUs, there are a couple other requirements that you do need. You do need to go to your motherboard website and then you need to go to the support tab and download the latest dynamic tuning technology driver for your motherboard. Make sure you're up to date on your BIOS as well. Um, this is just what allows Intel APO to kind of talk to the motherboard a little bit more and kind of better, it actually lets the, the app work. You also need to go into your motherboard's BIOS and enable the DTT, dynamic tuning technology, as well as hyperthreading. I'm known as someone who leaves hyperthreading off. I prefer it that way. So I was actually having to turn it on, meaning power does get a little heavier. But I will happily leave hyperthreading on if Intel has somehow beaten the Microsoft scheduler, allowed it to, okay, cool, you know, obviously the Microsoft scheduler is kind of made to fit every CPU. Maybe we can work hard to improve it for our users. So I'm perfectly fine with this. It's the same way that like the 7950X3D has to have like its own kind of modified scheduler with the chipset driver so that it does work. But okay, cool. We talked about what Intel APO is. How well does it perform? So I could only sadly test this on two titles, but I made it up for you guys. We've done some very in-depth benching. So I did Rainbow Six Siege and F122. I compared these both at 1080p lowest preset that is possible to make sure that we're in a heavily the most cpu bound scenario that we can be in as well as 1440p ultra i'm on a 1440p monitor and then we're maxing it out just to see okay maybe in like ray tracing game modes or high gpu loads maybe this could help with a little bit maybe the cpu can do a little bit more at that point point. and not only were we testing apo on and off as a lot of people may or may not know i am a big fan of disabling hyper threading obviously you need to have enough cores to do this this is why i have an i9 if you have anything with a decent with eight plus e cores you are perfectly fine to go ahead and disable hyper threading in my eyes but to start off before we even look at the fps i am going to take a look at rainbow six 
comparing APO on and off with hyperthreading on is obviously and hyperthreading off to look at package power draw and CPU temps. Taking a look at the Rainbow Six Siege benchmark, comparing it all together, and one thing you can instantly tell, APO on does have the highest CPU package power draw. Kind of sucks, I know. Like, it's not the most amazing thing, but hey, you know. Um, hyperthreading off is the lowest, but taking a look at these kind of core utilizations, you'll notice that eCores with APO off does actually have a lot more utilization, meaning possibly the game is running on it. One thing I did notice with APO on is that the CPU does a lot better at making sure it doesn't schedule things on the actual threads. It does it right now, actually, at the time I'm saying this, but it's a lot better at making sure it doesn't do that compared to the hype, the APO off with hyperthreading. This is once again why I just recommend to keep hyperthreading off. You get most of these benefits with lower power draw, but you don't have to deal with the scheduler kind of dealing with things. You let the performance core do its thing. You let the efficiency cores do it thing. Do its thing. Lower temperatures, lower power draw. Hyperthreading. This is a, there's a reason Intel's removing it for Arrow Lake. Here is Rainbow Six Siege with 1440p Ultra preset. Obviously, these are about the same thing. The higher that you have your settings and the higher you have your resolution, the more you're going to be getting into a GPU bound scenario. Meaning that the CPU doesn't really matter as much. What really matters more is just the GPU, how fast your GPU can be. I'm on a 4090, it's overclocked to three gigahertz. One of the fastest 4090s you can get as well. You're not gonna have any issues if you have a 4090, so just don't be poor for 1440p Ultra. Taking a look now at 1080p low, we can actually see the APO does actually do something here. So the averages are about the same. Once again, when you're running at 900 plus FPS, does it really matter? 1100, also the max FPS are about the same. But look at those minimums. So APO on and hyperthreading off basically are pretty neck and neck with those minimum FPS, which do matter the most in this benchmark. Looking at APO off, you can really see kind of the issues, in my opinion, with hyperthreading on. A lot of these schedulers don't really understand the difference between like a normal core and a thread, which does cause, okay, if you schedule it to the threads, you're going to have a lot of issues as we saw earlier so just making sure that things actually do stay off of the actual threads on a cpu once again this is why hyperthreading off is in my opinion goaded but on now to f1 f122 on the ultra high preset and look at it it turns out that if you're all gpu bound running at 99 percent usage cpu doesn't matter but hey it was it was worth a shot maybe okay apo off has two fps lower in the average Compared to the other two, oh no, it's so much worse. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. Let's go to 1080p. 1080p ultra low. Look at that. The APO off is significantly worse, in my opinion, everywhere but the minimums, which, look at there, they lose to hyperthreading off. So, honestly, hyperthreading off here is just, in my opinion, the king here. APO on is pretty good. I think that if you need to have your threads on, go ahead and use it. The way that I see APO really is just kind of like a band-aid fix to Intel not really wanting to let go of their threads. Intel's big kind of marketing scheme, in my opinion, for these CPUs is just saying, dude, look at the Cinebench score, not realizing that Cinebench score does not matter for gaming. If Cinebench scores mattered for gaming, every gamer, every competitive gamer would be on a Threadripper. Doesn't matter. What I do think we proved here is why 14th gen will be the last consumer CPUs with hyperthreading on because hyperthreading disabled is so much better. Arrow Lake has rumored to have hyperthreading off. I've mentioned this before. Definitely excited now for 15th gen seeing, okay, maybe if we don't focus on the threads, don't focus on that, focus on the gaming performance, what's going to happen? But if you guys did enjoy, hit the like button down below, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know down below if you used Intel APO, if you have an Intel CPU that supports it, and also, what games do you want Intel to support with this next? Imagine something like Warzone going on to this. Dude, everyone would drop their Intel, I mean their AMD partnerships like instantly and just go to one of these. You need, you need this and APO to get top 250 and ranked, by the way. And if you don't have that, and since we have to wait now, use the link down below for my PC optimization service. $150 max out the PC. You also as well 
can join the Discord. Support me there with a membership. But I'll see you guys later. Peace.